Hey guys, welcome to Network Topologies. Network Topologies. Now, not apologies, topologies. I'm going to explain to you what topologies means in a minute. This is going to be a slightly longer lesson than normal because we're going to go through a whole bunch of network topologies. So let me explain to you, first of all, what is a network topology? Okay, so the word topology means how computers are connected to each other in a network how they are connected not as in the physical connections like what are, you know what what cables do we use and what cards do we use or wireless or wired or whatever no it's the structure of a network the actual structure we're going to have a look at this now we're going to look at seven different network topologies and we're going to go through them one at a time and you can sort of then see what they mean how they are put together and what it means for us if we're ever working in a network situation one day so our first network topology that we're going to look at is star the star topology now it's called star because obviously everything looks it's like in a star shape okay it's not literally in a star shape in a business but it's the way it's connected everything connects to a central device so each node okay so learn how to say the word node because that's what we call a connection point okay so a computer would be a node each node connects to a central device such as a centralized server or perhaps a switch or a hub or router of some kind in this diagram you can see we have the main switch in the middle there what are some of the advantages of a star to topology network all right well first of all the first one is a centralized management of the network through the use of a central computer or a hub or a switch and that was the image that we saw in the previous slide also it's very easy to add computers to this kind of network they just slot in and it goes into the next available port on the switch if one computer fails and this is actually quite important if one computer fails the rest of the network will continue to function as normally which is great okay because you don't want your network going down how about some of the disadvantages of a star topology network well it is a lot more expensive to implement especially because if you're using switches or routers as your central network device and not just a computer then it's going to cost a lot more money because of the setup that is entailed if the central computer if the hub or the switch fails then the whole network goes down Okay, so it's great that if one computer fails, the network is fine, but if the central location, the central access point dies, so does your network. That's not good. The central network device basically determines the performance and the number of nodes that the network can handle. So if you have a switch that can take, you know, 32 computers, then 32 computers is pretty much the limit. You can't put more than 32 computers on. All right. Hope that makes a bit of sense. Let's have a look at the next one. The next one is ring topology. A ring network or a ring topology network is illustrated like this. Why? Because the, can, the way that the computers are connected to each other creates a circular data path. It goes from one to the other to the other. And it goes in a circular path. That's what a ring topology network is for. So what about some of the advantages? Well, a network server is not necessarily needed to control the network connectivity between each workstation. Also, we can add additional workstations to this without impacting the performance of the network. It just slots in and the data path is undisturbed, undisturbed, if that's a word. And data transfer between uh, workstations continues to remain high speed. Okay, so that all th those are some of the advantages of a ring topology network. Some of the disadvantages though, being in a ring topology network is that all data being transferred must go through every single node on the work on the network every single workstation so the data is going to go from one computer to the other to the other to the other and around and that kind of will take time the hardware that is needed to connect the workstation is a lot more expensive than ethernet cards and hubs and switches and the entire network is impacted if just one workstation shuts down because think about it it's going in a circle and if one machine is now shut down you have a problem all right bus topology the bus now if you think about a bus before i show you the picture think about a bus going along a route and it's going down the road and it stops at certain points so there's a main bus route and little stop points along the way 
Right, I've tried to illustrate that like this. Here are all of our nodes or our connection points or our computers. There is our bus line in the middle there. And every computer and network device connects to this network via a single cable or a single pathway. Okay, so that's what a bus topology looks like. Think about it like a bus going along and then stopping, you know. Okay, I'm going to get a little picture of a bus there. Some of the advantages of a bus topology network, well, it's the easiest network to put together because everything is in a linear fashion. It requires a lot less cable length than a star topology. And it works very well when you have a small network because it's easy to implement and you don't need all of that stuff. Okay, stuff as in the cables and all that stuff. All right. However, some of the disadvantages of a bus topology network, not great for large networks because obviously the advantage was great for small networks, not great for large networks. Other topologies are better for that. It is difficult to identify problems if the whole network goes down because you might not be able to ascertain right away where the fault is along the path. All right, so that's a bit of a problem. And if you do add additional devices to this type of topology network, it does start to slow the network down. Point-to-point -point topology. Now, this is actually the easiest one and the simplest one of all. From one point to another. That's it. Okay, it's just, it's the simplest topology. It connects two nodes to each other with a common link. So another example would be like your TV remote and your TV. One point, another point. And that's it. So you press a button, it sends a signal, signal received, action. Signal sent back if something's wrong, whatever. That is a basic point-to-point -point topology network. Same thing here. Some of the advantages of a point-to-point -point topology network, well, it's very fast because it only has to go between two points, all right? It's the simplest connectivity that you can get, and it's very easy to handle and maintain. No rocket science here, guys. However, some of the disadvantages of a point-to-point point -point topology network, that's like a tongue twister, point-to-point -to -point topology network. Say that fast, 10 times. The entire network depends on the common channel. So if the link is broken, okay, so that link, because it's one thing, it's like point-to-point, -point, one link. If that link is broken, the whole network is kaput, dead, finished. It is only used for where the nodes are sort of closely located. So like within an office, a small office, for example, one point to another. That's it. And of course, if one node is down, so if one computer is down and it's point to point, you cannot transfer data any longer. All right. So when you look at this video again, pause on the pictures of the topology and have a look, and then you can see where the advantages and disadvantages fit in. Okay. Next, we have mesh topology. Mesh. Now, when you think of the word mesh, mesh sounds like when you mesh stuff together, you know, like a net of some kind. Okay. And that's kind of what this is going to look like. So here you can see we have our network and there's just a mesh, like a whole web there. What that means is that every computer and network device, they're all interconnected. So this one connects to that one and connects to that one and backwards and forwards and everything connects to everything. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. What does that mean for us in terms of advantages? Well, multiple devices can uh, submit data simultaneously. In some networks, you can send and then receive and then send and then receive. Or you can send and receive, but then the speed is slower. On a mesh topology network, all devices can transmit data, sending and receiving at the same time. If you have a failure in one device, it doesn't cause a break in the whole network or any of the transmission of data because there's everything that's connected. Okay, so this is kind of like a mini internet if you think about it, with everything just connected, constantly connected and simultaneously transferring data backwards and forwards. Adding additional devices to the network doesn't disrupt the transmission between other devices. Okay, so because they can always choose another path. All right, it's actually pretty cool. However, some of the disadvantages of a mesh network, it is a lot more expensive to implement than the other network topologies. Maintaining a mesh network can actually be very difficult and time consuming. You need someone who's specialized in network administration who knows their stuff. Okay, so if you want to become an IT administrator one day, this is the job to get. 
All right. The chance of redundant connections is high. Now, what does that mean, redundant connections? Well, redundant means useless or inefficient not working properly or correctly. And so sometimes you might have a machine that's down or a part of the network is down or a physical part of the network is down and you have to now find where exactly the problem is and troubleshoot till you find that node that is malfunctioning or not working properly. And so redundant connections basically slow down your network speed and cause a lot of inefficiencies on your network. All right, look up those words if you're not sure what they mean or call me. The tree topology. Now, when you think tree, you think root, branches, good. That's how you should be thinking because that's what a tree topology is like. Have a look at this diagram. So we have our main computer at the top there. It's connected to two computers. And then each one of those computers is connected to two computers. And then you can obviously follow that further down. If you think about it, then those two computers are connected to another two. It starts to branch out, okay? But you'll see that there's a pattern there. It's two computers at a time. All right, only two computers at a time. So your elements are all connected to each other kind of like the branches of a tree. Now, why would we use a network like this? First of all, some of the advantages are that there can only be one connection between any two connected nodes. That means that we can create a natural parent-child hierarchy. What does that mean? Right, well, it means that we can have groups of computers that we can split and organize into separate work uh, work groups. Is that the right word? Work groups. And so you can have, well, that's the admin group and that's the student group and that's the staff auxiliary training group. I don't know. I just made that word up. But anyway, what we can do with a, a tree topology is basically branch off computer networks and keep them separate from each other as well. That means that if you go into a company, you might have your administrator be on a computer network and have access to all kinds of things that you on your network do not have access to. That's simply because of the way they've structured the network, probably a tree topology network. So hybrid topology, what is hybrid? Well, hybrid we know is simply just a mix match mesh of everything, okay? It's a bit of this, a bit of that, and it's all kind of working together. So here, look at that, ex that look at that example. We have star networks running along a, a bus topology underneath. So any hybrid topology is a type of network topology that uses two or more differing network topologies. Okay, so I've said the word topology like 50 times in this uh, video. I hope it's making sense to you guys. Go back and watch it again if you need to go over any of the, the descriptions or illustrations and make sure that you know at least the differences between the different networks, what they do, some of the advantages and disadvantages of the most common networks. The most common network, by the way, is I think the star network. I think that's the most common network. A little bit of information there for you.